Ms. Ashland, in Mr. Atencio's written te testimony, he mentions that your company, Enduring Resources, spilled over 40,000 gallons of toxic fracking slurry mixed with crude oil onto his family's allotment near Chaco Canyon. Do you dispute this fact? In Enduring Resources, has informed me that the spill did not occur on, the, on Mr. Atencio's allotment. It did occur, there was a spill in 2019. It was about 300 barrels of oil and about 1,000 barrels of water. It was cleaned up immediately and it was- So the spill did occur the, of 40,000. It was in the middle of February and it was the result of from a frozen pipe. And, but you dispute that it touched Mr. Atencio's allotment. I've been told that it did not. Mr. Atencio, was this spill on your allotment? Yes, uh, my, father's, uh, my father's allotment. Okay. Ms. Ashland, did Enduring Resources pay any fines for impacts to land or water from that spill? Just simple, yes or no? No. No, no. So the company did not uh, pay any fines for the impact of that spill. Uh, Mr. Atencio, did your family or your chapter ever hear at all from Enduring Resources about this spill? Ranking member, no, we have yet to receive any formal response from Enduring Resources. And I think this is something that speaks to a pattern that we have seen in front of this committee. To be clear, the kinds of pollution from that spill and a spill of that magnitude is profound, with highly noxious, hazardous air pollutants and methane that either leak inadvertently or are vented or flared by operators. I have seen it in person. I have seen families burn when they breathe in some of this air. And in fact, so much methane spills out of industrial vents in the region that the methane cloud over New Mexico is now visible from space. We see this, and it, hap it happens not just in this instance, but in many others, where, where I have brought this point in front of this committee that people deserve to know if they are being poisoned, whether it's by accident or whether it's by any other process. And they are not being informed. They are not being told. The CDC also tells us that exposure to these pollutants can cause significant long-term health damage. Mr. Atencio, since the 2019 spill, have Enduring Resources or other oil and gas companies taken any steps to notify nearby communities of methane leaks, oil spills, or other incidents? No. And as Enduring Resources started building the infrastructure necessary to produce fossil fuels in the community, were you ever informed of the risk associated with these plants? No. Now, one thing I do want to speak to is the very real economic harm and injustice associated with this issue. Because Native people and indigenous communities have been abused and have not been respected. And in stripping everything away, we now are in an economic hostage situation where people feel like the only opportunity and that the only source is to, be, is to acquiesce to oil and gas. And the answer to that is not to revert back, to, in my view, not to revert back to that, but to invest and reinvest in these communities, particularly where there is harm being done, particularly where there is disinvestment being done. And if families are being impacted in these allotments, they deserve economic restitution. And I, President Nigren, I understand that the Navajo Nation has taken a position on the 10-mile withdrawal, but that aside, are there other steps the federal government can take to better support the Navajo Nation through an energy transition? Thank you, Honorable uh, Cortez. I really appreciate that uh, question. One of the things I wanna say is I was hoping that those discussions were gonna happen this year prior to, uh, uh, I did not even know about the announcement or anything from the secretary, but my hope was that we were gonna have these discussions so that we can come up with a collective solution because representing, a coal, uh, like uh, in Arizona, we had probably the biggest, cleanest coal fire plant, NGS, 
that was decommissioned and now doesn't exist anymore. The promise was solar fields down the, down the road, but now nothing exists and people are out of jobs. There's no royalties, there's no taxes. So I truly agree with having a transition plan that's equitable 